Red 2 standing by, all four lit and in the green, welcome back to Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. Things are a little bit different today as we display a very interesting pod racer style. No connection cables, no energy binders and the cockpit at the front. It seems to be the design perfect for a madman, but how well will its pilot, the little Zamster Never Key, do? Will his design be the key to success, or will he never make anything of himself? I'd rather be making bad puns than talking about the stupid track on which you unlock Bozzy Baranta. I have absolutely no fondness for Abyss, it's worse than anything I've encountered in Mario Kart. And keep in mind I don't really like Mario Kart that much, so that's saying something. Anyway, let's get on with having a look at Never Key's very unusual racer. My favourite racer in the game, Never Key, is a Zamster from the world of Zagabar. That's not Dagobah with an X tacked on the front, by the way. It's a world full of fungi and plants, many of them very dangerous. Kind of a mix of carnivorous trees and don't eat the mushroom, really. Anyway, Never Key carved out a niche for himself as a daredevil pilot controlling a thoroughly unorthodox craft. His Farwan and Glot pod racer was dangerous to fly due to its cockpit being at the front actually linking the engines that way through a solid crossbar, no energy binders. However, its excellent agility was a significant advantage. Key rapidly earned a fan base among those who enjoyed his non-conformist attitude, and he was never really bothered by the criticisms of others. He simply raced as well as he could and sought to be the best. There was definitely something to that unique pod racer though. Never Key proved himself a skilled contender in locations like Barunda's tracks, where he earned favourite status on the Baru Coast course. He would also earn accolades on a number of courses across the circuit before racing on Tatooine. This culminated in him entering the Boonta Classic of 32 BBY. Key started quite poorly and fell towards the back of the pack. He sought to find a shortcut on the second lap, but his attempts to do so caused him to stray off course and he was allegedly never seen again. While hollow footage of Key being retrieved from the wreckage of his pod racer by Jabba the Hutt's men surfaced, also depicting Jabba paying bounty hunter Aura Singh, some doubted the veracity of this footage. If Key did indeed vanish and ultimately perish in the deserts of Tatooine, then finally Rats Tyrell has some company in the death records of that race. Never Key's pod racer was a rather distinct design manufactured by Farwan and Glot. The aerodynamic cockpit is actually fixed sturdily in front of the engines, trading off raw speed due to the potential risks of the design. It compensates with excellent handling and braking. Despite the claim that it's fairly slow, the racer offers a top speed of 785 km an hour. The vehicle's overall length is 7.16 meters, so this may be the length of the engines only. It is considered a bit of a madman's design, because if you crash into something you're probably going to die. Even more so than usual. As we can see, Never Key has exceptional traction. Starts out very well. Turning is... Okay for the beginning. Acceleration is very strong, top speed is not great. Air brake is actually pretty good. Tying in with those safety features. Cooling is... A little low but repair is all right let's see how his pod racer will be upgraded oh, shop, huh? so traction does not take much to wind up at full capacity the r300 will have it at top easily turning will jump out pretty well and he'll hold out quite nicely probably about as much as his traction is at base. Acceleration, as always, nobody really jumps up very high when it comes to acceleration, but Key does have one of the stronger acceleration stats we've seen. When it comes to top speed, he will be in the same boat as Elan Mack, needing that block 6 to get to top. Brakes will continue to hold out particularly well, he'll hit top with the Quadrajet easily. And cooling systems will fare all right. It's nothing spectacular, but it will do get the job done. About average. Repair, on the other hand, as we can see, jumping up will be 
pretty solid. So he'll be able to fix himself and get back in the race quite easily. Once again, another very solid spread of times, all of which are pretty tight. But we have seen some very spectacular times. If you've been paying attention, these ones were actually incredibly impressive. And part of the reason why I wound up doing four laps, because I felt I had to try and eradicate any potential claims, at least in my head, of favoritism. Because we have pretty impressive results, as I've said. We have a time of... The Clarkson-esque pause has to be evident. One fifty-eight point eight oh three to give you an idea of how good that time is. My fastest time, which you might have seen along the way, is one fifty-eight point five eight zero, which I set with Anakin while boosting. Never key nearly knocked off the top time without boosting. I was gobsmacked, honestly. I was really impressed with this, and it's pretty flash given what Elan Mack churned out last time. This is a very impressive time. Will it be beaten? We will have to wait and see, because now we're moving on to Bozzy Baranta. Not a lot is known about Bozzy Baranta, admittedly. We do know he worked as a mechanic on Gascano's crew, and harboured dreams of becoming a pod racer himself. Secretly, Baranta would practice using Gascano's Ord Pedrovia until he felt he could hold his own on the amateur circuit. Upon proving himself to his boss, Baranta was able to amicably part ways with Gascano, the Zexto even contributing to the purchase of a Shelba 730 Razor pod racer. Bozzy proved himself a fairly capable pilot, which was obviously the case if he was able to receive track favourite status on that absolute nightmare known as Abyss. That's really about all we have on him. But as one final bit of trivia, it seems that early in development for the movie, he was known as Bozzy Barada, and his design was the one which would become Dud Bolt. Bozzy Baranta drives a Shelba 730 Razor pod racer, which he bought with a little help from his old boss Gascano. 
We unfortunately do not know many stunts of this particular vehicle. It was intended to be shown in episode 1 but was ultimately cut. What is known is that apparently the Shelba is not overly fast, but it is well suited for precise movement as it has pretty good handling. I mean if you're the track favourite on Abyss you've got to have damn good handling. The cautious Bozzy made frequent repairs, which resulted in him spending a bit more money on fixing it than he did buying it. I can't offer you very much information on this craft because little is known. Bozzy ultimately did not appear in the movie. So traction is fairly decent to start off with, turning is decent, acceleration decent, top speed not that great, air braking terrible. Bozzy has stats comparable to some of the beginning races which is a little disappointing considering what you have to go to get him. Anyway, let's get to our examination of his capabilities. Only the best parts you find here in my shop, huh? So, for traction, Bozzy will hold out fairly well. It's not anything spectacular, but it will do the job. Turning should do pretty well, but then again, almost everyone does. He's very close to top with that control stabilizer, which ties in with what we know of his racer. Acceleration doesn't stand out. It's decent, but not truly outstanding. As for top speed, he will do okay. Similar to Neverkey, just shy of top with a block 5. Air brake, somewhat similar to Clegg Holdfast, doesn't really have fantastic braking, though it's a bit better than old Clegg. He'll still do pretty well. Cooling will upgrade reasonably well, but still not be anything to write home about. And repair systems... Tying in with what we know of Bozzy, do work pretty well. So he's not outstanding. Almost a bit of a joke in a sense compared to what you have to go through to get him, but he's not exactly crummy. Sorry about that, I hit the button. A Well, let's be honest here, just about anything is going to look a little bit subpar compared to Never Key's record-breaking feats in the previous session. But nonetheless, Bozzy Baranta has done fairly well for himself. Some of his times were a little bit on the slower side, perhaps, but he did manage to redeem himself with a couple of good efforts along the way. Not bad for a mechanic who rose through the ranks. Bozzy Baranta's top time is 2 minutes... 1.701 seconds, which puts him 
Seventh on the list, around the middle of the pack, not too bad, just a fraction ahead of Mars Guo, as we can see there. Admittedly, given what you have to go through in order to unlock him, it's still not quite worth it, but he can do the job pretty well anyway. That wraps everything up for this episode. Next time, we are going to be looking at Bowls Roar and Odie Mandrell. Thank you very much for joining me. Until next time, this is Red 2 returning to base. May the Force be with you.